Hi everybody, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for watching. Welcome to yet another update for my hashtag 365 days of samples. So we're just gonna dive right in here and I'm gonna start with the products that I would not purchase. So the first product is about 90% finished and then I decided I wasn't gonna fight with it anymore. It is the OPI Avo Juice Skin Quenchers and this is in Jasmine. So it's a hand and body lotion as I think I already said. Um, so you can see that there is a tiny, tiny bit left there still, but I decided that it wasn't worth struggling with it to get that little bit out because I don't care for hand and body lotions and I'm just trying to finish up the ones that I do have. I just don't like the way that it feels on my body, my skin. I just hate it. And Jasmine is an okay scent. I'm definitely not crazy about Jasmine. If body lotions have a scent that I like, I can sort of put up with it a little bit more than scents that I don't like. And Jasmine is definitely a scent that I dislike. So I know I have a ton more of these to use too as well. So not gonna fight with myself over finishing that last little bit. I finished the Corez Yogurt Nourishing Fluid Veil Face Sunscreen. I actually just skipped using this on my face as I talked about in my last update. I was just, felt like I had some weird skin issues going on and it was probably a combination of stress and hormones, not just the SPF, which I thought because I have used other SPF products and my skin has reacted fine. But just on the safe side where I had used this previously, I decided to skip using it on my face and I used it mostly on, on my arm area. And this is such a small bottle, it didn't take very long to use at all. It's okay. I like Corez products in general, I just don't care for this one. The next product I tried out and didn't quite like was the Guerlain Lingerie Depot. This is the Invisible Skin Fusion Foundation with sunscreen. So I thought this was going to be a pretty decent color match for me as it is the shade 02, but it was very, very dark and a little bit yellow. So I think that this must be their, their lightest warm toned foundation. So color matching aside, I still put it on try to try it out. The first thing I noticed overwhelmingly though was the scent. It is very, very heavily perfumed and I did not like that at all. That immediately turned me off because when you're applying foundation, you're going around your nose area and the strong perfume, I just could not stand it. And it wasn't just the sunscreen. It definitely was like a floral fragrance. So it was almost like they were trying to cover up sort of a sunscreen scent with a perfume. I did not care for that at all. The actual foundation itself was fairly nice. Now, obviously I'm judging this based on a incorrect color match, but it really was a lightweight foundation, very much like a second skin foundation. I don't really have anything um, that I could compare it to. I'd say the closest thing that I have that I like is the D Dior um, serum the new air serum, I think it's some something around that. Just the consistency was very similar to that one, which I like, but even if this came in a perfect match for me, I would not, I would not buy it. I would not wear it. I wouldn't even wear it if it was given to me because of the scent that I strongly dislike the scent that much. So if you can handle the fragrance and you are looking for a foundation that's going to give you more of a natural looking coverage, get a sample of this one and try it out. But if you are fragrance adverse like I am, definitely stay away from this one. And the last thing is the NARS Laguna Liquid Bronzer. So this package is quite messy. It tells you to be careful like when you open it, but I mean, come on, it's a liquid bronzer. It's going to go everywhere. So I'm actually wearing this today mixed with a little bit of my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. So I said I was gonna pass on it because I wasn't quite sure of it, but you guys let me know what you think. I just feel like bronzers, liquid bronzers, make me look pretty orangey and not the best. Now, I kind of like it, but I'm also kind of unsure. 
I think that this is one that I'm going to strongly pass on, but I would definitely like to hear your guys' feedback on what you think, because I did mix it with foundation and I did rub a little bit around here, so it's basically on my entire face. So let me know what you think, but I think that I would pass on this and stick with more of a liquid highlighter to mix with my foundation to get that sort of like shimmery, dewy look as opposed to being a little bit more bronzy. I have two products that I would purchase. I have the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day. Um, this is the 5-in-1 styling treatment and I, I think I actually have a bigger deluxe size sample of this. So I really liked this. I feel like it helps my hair a little bit actually. This one, it really does smooth the hair. It's very much like the um, Alterna CC Cream which I talked about in my last update. This one's a little bit stickier, where the CC cream is a little bit of a smoother consistency. Now this one is supposed to smooth, volumize, condition, strengthen, and polish. And it does seem to volumize my hair a little bit. I took my hair out of its braid after sleeping on it wet last night, and I was like, oh, my hair seems quite, to have a lot more volume. I had it down, but I find that filming with my hair down, it kind of captures like every single little frayed piece of hair. So it it doesn't always look the best. And the last thing is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Concealer. This came with four shades, so I used one shade and immediately, immediately upon using it, I noticed how creamy it was. And I actually talked about it on Snapchat for anyone who smells, follows, follows, follows me on that. I had put it on the back of my hand first and I was like, wow, this took me by surprise because I'm so used to concealers being thicker consistencies. This is so creamy. So to test it out, I did something completely ridiculous and I just put it all over my face. So I really wanted to try what it would be like under the eyes. I wanted to see what it would be like on any spots areas I had and just kind of wanted to see how it would work. And I really, really liked it. Not for under the eyes, definitely too, too thick for that. But I did like it as a concealer on different parts of my face. And I would definitely, definitely purchase this. I definitely need to try the lightest shade to see if it matches me, but this is definitely going on my wish list for sure. Okay, so I'm going to choose the next seven items. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so the first thing I have here is from Josie Moran, and it is the Argan Daily Moisturizer. So it's an SPF of 47. I have from Ule Henriksen a Three Little Wonders Truth Serum Collagen Booster Sheer Transformation and Invigorating Night Treatment. I have from Clinique the Clinique Smart Custom Repair Serum. I have from Glam Glow the Thirsty Mud Hydrating Treatment. It's a little hard to see that. I have a perfume from Atelier Cologne. This is the Mandarin Glacial. I have the OPI Apple Juice Skin Quencher in Ginger Lily, so another hand and body lotion. And the last thing I have here is from Hard Candy and it is the Walk the Line Liquid Eyeliner. So that is everything for my update. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I will see you in my next one. Bye!